الغفور الحمد لله الغفور الودود وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد عليه أفضل الصلاة والتسليم صاحب لواء الحمد والمقام المحمود وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا وعظيمنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم أما بعد After all we all look about any society a days that the corruption which fill up and many people look at the society looks like complaining and seeing corruption here, sins here and there, everywhere. And always look at solution people, especially for Muslims, you have to go back to religion. So this is the right answer, but how? Before we go back, we have to diagnose the problem which we are going through. The corruption in the society, it comes from the one who relaxes and he is not expecting any punishment. When someone not expecting any punishment, he will feel that it's okay, he could do anything. No, no punishment. Could be rewarded, but if he did something wrong, no one is following him. Some people, they steal, they kill, they do whatever. People complain. Then you find after that he died and no one judged him. No one took, took him to court or put him in, 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 in the stand for judging. That's it. He died. Nothing wrong. Nothing happened to him. So we have to take those ideas. People always in any society, huh, they start with the perfect way of life. This is the start. How did humanity start? From Adam salam, start with everything purified. They don't know sins, even they know what made the sins. When the Islamic state in the time of the Prophet وسلم, and the Sahaba, عنهم, all of them, they felt this way. They said the society itself, if it's not clean and pure and being mended, this means our hereafter is a threat. We have no safe in the hereafter. But if the society and the people have no corruption around them and they are perfectly living, you find the people, they said, now we could say, we are not safe, but inshallah we will be safe in the hereafter. For that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا لَا يَرْجُونَ حِسَابًا وَكَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا كِذَّابًا Why? Because they don't expect any punishment or recurring, recurring for their sins. They don't expect it. They do whatever. And they deny the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you ask anyone who tell him that there's be fear Allah said, what are you talking about? He didn't feel guilty of committing a sin. So the point here, the corruption came from here. When there is no judging and no following the sinner or the one who commits the crime, the crime will expand. The society will be corrupted. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran gave you this reason and he gave you the solution. First of all, we see how how the society is being corrupted and destroyed. First of all, the ruler. The ruler, if he neglect the punishment of the people, hmm? and how he neglect that? So the people, they say, a criminal. How he neglect that? The, the ruler will find there's people belongs to him, especially if he is an oppressed ruler. And you find some people who are closer to him, and he protected them. Whatever they did, or his son, or his uh, uh, whatever they are, you see, and they are relaxed by father or the one my leader. I am supporting him. He will take me out of it. So he will do whatever he wanna, and he knows he rely on those people who are protecting him and saving him from that punishment. And other people who are not 
in charge and they are scared and this, this rule stuck on them. When they see that, they will do the same thing, but they hide. They don't want to be captured. They are in a, he didn't say anything, so they are stealing, I will steal. But if he will be catched, will be punished, but let me hide. Many of those, they die. And no punishment to them. They die peacefully and nothing wrong with this. Then the society, this is the first one is the ruler. The second one is the society. It's not judging people or punishing people for their crimes. What the society do, are we are living here? everywhere, you find when the crime has a specific uh, law of punishment for the killer, a capital punishment, who steal, we don't want to say, cut his hand, let him go to jail for years, you know, he will lose his freedom for 10, 15 years. A day the society starts in the public, especially the people who are living under the democracy, uh, and they start to feel the human rights, they say it is it's a human, it's a soul. How to kill? How to put this person to, to death? Because a sinner will be corrected, teach him, send him to a college, let him learn. They give him a chance uh, to be more thief and to be more criminal and to do more things. If he stops, someone else will do it. The society itself is not strict in this. So he will give to protect the crime without the here and they feel they are in their own uh, opinions they are saving lives but by that it's not saving lives they are saving one person and they are involving more in the crime this is the second one the third one the individuals who live in the society itself you find the individual eh, when he finds himself his inner is not judging him is not telling him what to do, what not to do. If he did something wrong, said, okay, all the, the regime is doing this, and the society is doing, why not me? I want to live. So his inner tell him go. He never felt guilty in doing anything wrong. This is three things. Now, this is three things that the individual didn't feel guilty, and his inner or his ego inside him. They didn't judge him. They didn't put him in court eh, to say it is haram or it's prohibited. Hmm? He will do it. But he will hide himself. He said, I don't want to be captured. Like a thief who steal uh, a store or they go to, to somewhere uh, to steal a car. He look around, no police, that's it. And he will see and run away. If he captured, they will put him in jail. This means he doesn't feel guilty. But he knows he's scared from someone who's more powerful than him. Now, we'll go to the other things. In the society itself, it's their slices. Who are the original of that? The original of the sin itself, or the crime, or spreading, expanding the corruption in the society. Huh? First of all, hmm, there's people, they call themselves, belongs to faces. They deny the existence of God. Looks like the atheist, secular. Some people, they say, we deny that. So if you talk about the hereafter, and many people will be punished, there is none. And they saw there's many people get die, they die, and nobody asked them what to do. So whatever you do in this world, it is yours. After you die, that's it, no more. <laughs> Some other people, they believe in God, but they don't believe in the punishment of the hereafter as long they believe in him only. Like the Christian, for example. said, as long you believe in Jesus, uh, he will take you to the kingdom of God. Do whatever. At the end, I believe you in Jesus. That's it. Since you believe in him, so he is saving you. Some other people, they believe in God. They believe in the hereafter. But they neglect. They make it easy on themselves. They feel that there is, yes, they will be <coughs> recognized or they will be, be charged, but Allah is a forgiver. They forget he is as a really punishment. 
He said, Allah, I will not let it go. But whatever I do, I want to live. People are doing this and this and this and this. He believed in everything. But he neglect all that. He said, Allah will forgive me. And I know. The other kind, the last one, he is believing in Allah. He is believing in the punishment and the, and the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu in the hereafter, and they work on that. Those individuals, if they start from themselves, <coughs> they are the ones who can save their society if they continue that. So we have who is the original corrupter and how it starts and the slices or the categories of the society, how they do that. Now it comes to the Quran. Remember any corruption or anything that happened, its solution is in the Quran. Always, if you find yourself that you are not able to solve a problem, nothing hard on Allah. Go back to your book and you'll find the solution there. At least you read the Quran, you find some more parts. All these faces on this world, hmm? all these faces, it will fail and will increase the corruption and increase the crime, and we see it. Even go to back home. Everybody belongs to a culture. And go back home. You, you, you compare yourself between a hundred years ago and a days, and you find a hundred years ago was do good. There's people have the fear of Allah, there are people doing good, there's good, bad people, there's but the majority you feel that the society is living in peace. But if you go now, you say, Oh, my society changed, uh, the culture changed, I don't know what's going on. What's going on? Because there are some people they neglect this issue. The fear of Allah and the hereafter, they neglect it completely. They said, Allah is a forgiver and he will forgive me. I'm going to pray. But when you leave your prayer, you go and fall in haram again. So what to do? The only thing, as a human being, we have to go back to Allah by individual. The ruler, nothing to do with him. The society, nothing to do with him. It's in your hand, in your hand as an individual. If, if your inner start to blame you, to stop you, to say, okay, I have kids. If I fed them from haram, what to do? What is gonna happen? It's gonna be in their body. And one day, if I anything happened to them, it's my fault. You have to remember that. If I kill someone and run away. And nobody, nobody hold you. So many people, they kill and they run from the, from, the, from the law. And they go to different country, different land. And no arresting to them. And they die. Nothing happened to them. And they work, have work, and everything. And nothing happened to them. So what to do with those people? You and me, if we follow the right way, will say, those people, look what happened. The law didn't catch them. They were not in the hand of the law, and they ran away. But you have to, if you believe, those people, they believe or not, if you believe, if they run away from the law of this dunya, they will never run away from the law in the hereafter. For that, we are here like this. We are humans. You find people, they kill a drunk. People that's like a leader of a country. Leader. Big leader. He killed millions. He drives out many millions of people from their homes. After that, you find yourself, this man, when he died, they make him a, 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 a ceremony just maybe everybody dreamed to have it. Praise him in front of the world. He is a peaceful, he is, he is, he is. Who's going to judge him? You get now? Many people, they said he has to, 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 to be in jail, this man. Nobody listened to you. <laughs> Nobody listened to you. In your country, in my country, in his country, and here, there, many people they do that. But nobody uh, asks and tell you uh, uh, just because he died, he's a criminal, she, we shouldn't be in his uh, ceremony. Nobody said that. They praise him. And they put what he was saying in, the, in, the, in his, his life. This, this president says such, such and such, oh, he is a good president, or a good prime minister, or a good leader, or whatever he is. If you believe for that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he said 
ها؟ وكذبوا ذلك وكذبوا بآياتنا كذاب إنهم كانوا لا يرجون حسابا. They think no judging. In the hereafter, I will be in heaven with Jesus or with whatever He is, whatever He is. See, it doesn't matter. Remember that the judge of Allah will never hide. That's all what you do. If you believe in this, that's what we start. If you believe that if I could lie on my boss, I tell him, uh, just what I took, I didn't take it, stole it, etc. He will believe you. Right? He will believe you. I will go. Nothing wrong. Nothing happened. But you have inside you, if you believe Allah is watching you, you will never do it. Hadrat Amir al Mu'minin Umar al Khattab, radiallahu anhu, as his own with every day checking his king, he went out to the fields. He found a shepherd with a cup. He came to him. He said, I want to buy one of your. Uh, a sheep. He said, I'm sorry, I'm not owning it. There's a master for it. Go and ask him. He said, you don't have to ask him. I will give you the money and tell him the wolf ate it. He said, he will know. He said, who nobody will tell him. No, he will never know. And the man turned his back to Umar Khattab and he made his hand this way. Where is Allah? Where is Allah? Where is Allah? Then Umar Khattab turned his face and started to cry. By those, he said, by those, and their example, you will be, inshallah, safe in the here. Our hereafter will be safe. This is the one. This is the one they raise their community and their people. The Prophet ﷺ told us, don't be like those people. If someone of them from the high or the sophisticated people stole, they will let it go. If one of the public is called, they will punish him. By Allah, if Fatima, the daughter of Muhammad is stole, I will cut her hand. What that means? He didn't say it like this. Because he knows that Allah is watching. This one he stole, nobody said anything to him. That he knows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there in the, in, the, in the court, which is no one will be oppressed. No one will be unjust there. So if you live in this, you complain, you don't have to complain. You don't have to be to say, oh, they are doing it. Don't even think about it. Think about yourself. Let them steal, let them do. You are not able to stop anyone. If you are involved, you will be that hurt too. All what you do, let your inner judge you. The Muslims before, one of them described them. When they walk, they walk with a court inside them. They don't need judge. They don't need a, a lawyer. They don't need a plan. They don't need a, a, a defense. They are the judge. They are the court. And they are the lawyer. How? Remember that the Prophet ﷺ, in the time of the Prophet ﷺ, the woman who committed zina, and she was pregnant from zina. She came to him, O oh, Prophet of Allah, I am I commit zina and I am pregnant from zina. He looked at her and he turned his face. He wanted her to go. He said, you sure? He said, yes. He said, go two years. After, after you deliver him, come back. When she came back, go to you, feed him and come back. When he start to eat hard food, come back. Give her three years. She's able to run away. She doesn't need. Nobody is watching her. She's able to run away. She came after that. Yes, she took her back. But the point not here. Why she said that? Because she was the court. And she was the judge. And she was the lawyer. She was everything. She committed the sight and the sin. And they said, I did it. I, I, I deserve that the punishment. There is no need any to, to make a, a, a committee, to make people come to see. It's right. Let's watch her. Ask her parents. No. She carried a court inside her. And she is the one who decided. 
His aim is to run away. Another man, the same thing. He came to the first time, he told him, I don't mention at all. I am a married person. He said, maybe you kiss, maybe you, you touch, and that you want to give him excuse. He is not saving him, but he is giving him, so maybe, maybe not. He said, no, I did it. Please, punish me. Purify me. He took the decision. He didn't say the Sahaba come and sit and put it in front of him. You are the defensive, you are the plaintiff. He didn't say that. Because he knows those who they fear. They are going back to Allah. He will judge them. Let them be purified here and take my punishment here and feel the pain here instead of feeling an eternal life in their fire. That's what they say. That's us. We have to think this way. Start with your individual. Start with your family. If you did that and your family would pay the price, your kids would pay the price. Not you. Maybe you would be saved. Maybe in the hereafter not. But after you, they will be the one who spread corruption and more and expanded. Because our father was putting us a rules. And he was a good Muslim. And he is always a prey. But he did such and such and such and such. Why? Because no fear. No back to Allah. That's the point. We have to know, understand, you have to understand that you are coming to Allah, to the court of Allah. And he is the judge. Always remember that. Anyone died or ran away from the law, remember that he will face his destiny one day. If they do that, if they said no life after that, nothing after that, after death, tell them don't die. Why they make them die? Because there is a judgment. If there is no judgment, everybody will live the way. He won. Who cares? I will be the first one who will be the first one sitting in the world in the expense of the blood of others. It doesn't matter. But all of those people, they, since they believe they will die, this means there is something after. If they deny it because they want to they wanna openly run their reins to what? For everything. Because Islam will limit their desires, will stop them from committing that. For that they are fighting Islam now. Islam is not a terrorist relation. It's a peaceful relation. It's a just relation. Without Islam, the world will never live in peace. Never live in peace at all. Even all religions, which man made religion, they do, they said, we live in peace, we love, we love, we love, we love. But all of them, they are changing according to the desires of people. But we cannot do that. So always remember, religion is the only solution to the world. Not atheism, not secularism. Look at the rules of the secularism, what happened to our world. Technology, yes, technology is a part of a human, part of, of the mission of a human on earth. It's not a part of faith. But religion, the faith, the peace in the world, without religion cannot work. Those people who said we want to separate religion from the political area said, yes, we agree as Muslims if this politics, if the politics today, and we will involve Islam in it, we'll say we don't want to. Why? Because if anything wrong with the politics, they will say Islam is wrong because it's following something wrong. Islam is a patch. You cannot say I want to implement economic and leave in the absence of other rules. Because if you implement economy, you have to go through the haram, the interest, etc. Then you have to go to the faith, go to the iman, or the belief in Allah. So it's a package. So without this package, the societies in the world, on this earth, will never set up in peace unless this package will be covered. That's all. I say what you say, and Safrullah Ali, when I was in the world. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah, wa ashadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. My brothers and sisters, we have to understand that this world, without judging, cannot survive. 
peacefully. So before you being judged, judge yourself. This is, a, this is a life. Judge yourself. It is not too late for the person who is still alive, who has a heartbeat. Even you are in 90 years old, 100 years old, you still have time to repent. You still have time to go back to judge yourself. That's all what we need. Anyone who asks himself, they said, it's still early for me. I am young. I young, have kids, etc. We don't bring our kids to this world to feed them and give them good clothes and to take them to the, to the good schools. It is not only this. This is a lifestyle for everyone. It's common between Muslim and non-Muslim. But the youth must understand that there has to be judged one day. Everyone, they have to be judged. If you see your father doing something, nothing wrong, if you criticize him, if you see your son because this is your right on him, if you still see your son doing the same, that's thing, if you try to direct him the right way. Discuss the issue of open, open conversation between the kids and the father and mother. This is the issue. We have to judge ourselves to bring the right way for our life and the halal way of our life. If your life here is judged and being mended and repaired, remember that your hereafter will be the same. The same. So if you're, you're, this is the scale. If you see the society is corrupted and everything going inside each other and you don't know confusing you, this means that hereafter is, you, are a, you are a threat. You are not safe. We are included in this. Maybe it will take us more time. Don't rush it. Start from now, judging yourself. Maybe it will take from you, maybe you will die tomorrow. Maybe with, with your kids will take 50 years. Islam, uh, as long as we are thinking and try to our heart to implement that, it will be good. But if you neglect it and ignore it the way others, uh, then your hereafter is not safe. Not safe. You are not following the right way. So that's what we have to do. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to ease on us our, our deeds, inshallah, and to ease on us our matters. اللهم يسر أمورنا اللهم ارحم المؤمنين والمؤمنات اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منه والأموات اللهم يسر أمورنا اللهم يسر أمورنا واشرح صدورنا اللهم اشرح صدورنا اللهم ردنا إلى دينك ردا جميلا اللهم ردنا إلى دينك ردا جميلا اللهم ردنا إلى دينك ردا جميلا اللهم ارأف بنا يا رب العالمين اللهم ارأف بنا وبشبابنا وبناتنا يا رب العالمين إنك على ذلك خبير وبالإجابة جدير عباد الله إن الله يأمر العدي والإحسان وإنتاء ذو القربى وإنها عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبعض يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون وأقيم الصلاة Thank <laughs> you.